welcome May East. So you come from England. And in this video, we are going to uh, try to understand your life in, uh, in 10 minutes, very short. So can you uh, tell us uh, the main stone of your life? And next, we will, in another video, do about the present and then about the future. Well, since I remember my journey, mm. I've been a social change activist, mm. starting at university, Catholic University mm. in Sao Paulo, Brazil, being anti-dictatorship mm. and then anti-nuclear mm. against obsolete technology coming from Germany. Mm. And then... You are from Brazil? You I born in Brazil? Brazil? Yes. Oh, fantastic. And then anti... Somehow, I would say, environmentalist that was anti-loggers and miners. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit of a political feminist at that stage was anti-patriarchy. Mm -hmm. So half of my journey have been to disconstruct aspects of society that were dysfunctional. Mm. Then I came to Britain in the 90s, just after the Earth Summit. Yes. And I was very much impressed by Bickerminster Fuller saying, when you want to create the new, focus on the new until the old becomes obsolete. Mm. And that was a big shift in my life. So I decided to, instead of waking in the morning and trying to disconstruct the dysfunctions of society, to start building something I wanted to create. So I moved to Finhorn, an eco village in the northeast of Scotland. That is half of the ecological footprint of the average British person. And I joined the transition towns. I became an educator. I decided to do a master's in spatial planner and start working in different countries. Today, I work on design for sustainability and regenerative development in 48 countries. And Congratulations. I, thank you. 48 countries, uh, something. <laughs> yes, well, it is. But at the same time, everything I do is in group formation. I lead yeah. a whole generation of educators and yeah. designers for sustainability mm. spread on those mm. countries. Mm. and. Um, and that's me. Thank you. So what is actually your driver now and how you see the future? Because it will be interesting to make a short introduction to the next video. Well, I think our generation is facing today a convergence of multiple crises. Mm. And we are realizing that the mindset that has created this convergence cannot solve it. So I am into creating or co-creating or co-evolving frameworks mm -hmm. of thinking and action that can lead into dealing with the convergence of multiple crises. Yes, so that will be the major subject of the second video. And then can you say, two or three things about the future, how you see the future, because as you just said, there are a convergence of uh, dangers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are big crises in front of you. Earth, the crisis, of course, the climate crisis, the ecological crisis, then the social cra crisis, and then also uh, the economy is very, uh, may fail. So we are in a perfect storm. Futurists speak about perfect storm at the horizon. So how you see this storm and how you see the possibility to go ahead this storm and be resilient to this storm? From all the scenarios that our futurists mm. and, and thinkers and mm. philosophers would project the future mm. for the end of this millennium, mm. like Basarello said, this century is going to be holistic or not. But all the, all the provision, projections, I would say, we, have, we can summarize all in two scenarios. Mm. Transition is going to happen. Mm. Either we are going to design it, mm. or we're going to be victims of it. Mm. And I'm about, and I'm engaged into the business of designing mm. the change. Mm. So we can explore more how are we going to design the change when we enter into that conversation. So there are an important word there, which is design. And we are launching actually a design school because we consider design is a, 
one of the most important things right now, because it is connected with creativity design, is how you put together your creativity to design something mm -hmm. who can operate. Mm -hmm. So there are, uh, in the design, uh, the value of design, the possibility to move from creativity to really innovation, mm -hmm. something who are useful. So do you feel you are observing all over the 40 country, you are observing 40 country, uh, hundred of uh, activists. So do you see a new design I appears? Think, and how you feel this design? Is it a design in the pro thinking process? Can you explain the major uh, key point of this new design? I think design to be effective mm. needs to have two major components. Mm. And one is about critical thinking. If you don't understand the context mm. in which you're going to design the transition, it's very difficult to become a wishful thinking. Mm. So we need to have a deep analysis on the state of the world mm. or the context mm. we are designing. And after that is first. That's first. Second. The second one is about then entering to a process, a participatory process, mm -hmm. because innovation only happens when what you know meets with what I know mm. and cross, and it is in the crossing mm. that innovation can happen. Yes. So, so the then creating participatory mm. processes mm. through which new ideas could come into dealing with that analysis of what we want to transit, mm. to, to promote the transition. So first analysis to uh, participation. Participation and then moving with the process because in our generation we've been talking a lot about best pr practices, mm. uh, which is like a little bit of cut in reality. So mm. this piece of work has been mm. very well done and I don't think we need best practices, but we need best processes or efficient processes. Mm. So moving with the process with lots of feedback loops when you mm. you move the agenda and you check how we're doing and moving and actually positioning the flow and mm. being the flow mm. and letting the, fo the, 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 the flow informing because many times um, in the flow serendipity happens, by association happens, you have many new points of bifurcation, mm. you have many different concepts coming when you're into the design field that you need to be attentive. Mm. That is typically uh, what you describe is a, typically the, the value, the interesting part of what is an ecosystem, an innovation ecosystem. Because w when we point the word ecosystem, it is because it is interaction, exactly as you said, mm -hmm. and it is a complex interaction, and it is a interaction between different parts who are very different. So how you see those processes all over the world? What seems to you the place in the world who are the best practice? <laughs> In terms processes. of process, as you said, mm. because that is typically our subject. Yes. Mm. Well, you have various processes taking place mm. with vulnerable communities in the global south mm. that has been actually hit by the convergence of crisis, mm. particularly the climate crisis. Mm. And you can see that by creating learning environments and deep discussions on the state mm -hmm. of their reality and bringing the traditional thinking with some of the cutting edge um, food production like agroecology, agri um, permaculture, some, some techniques, some frameworks, you can start moving from being the victim of climate change into the designer of regenerative development that can continue, but also can adapt because what's happening with my monsoon that is not coming this year is different that's going to happen next year. So it's a, it's a constant adaptive uh, process of analysis 
and experimentation, learning, and advancing the process. So I would say we have examples into uh, communities working in the Podor region, in the Sahel, in Senegal. We have incredible examples in, in, in Orissa, in a region called Kakeriguma, uh, which is one of the lowest, uh, uh, I think they hit uh, uh, very high levels of poverty. Mm. We have examples in communities that have uh, their soil have been completely salinated in Bangladesh and they are hit by cyclones. We have examples of regenerative development taking place in the largest slum of South America, in Brazil, in, in Vila Brasilândia. We have many examples that are happening. And um, the, the projection is that as you start working with scale-linked design, whatever you do in your locality, somehow you are creating this influence in the larger picture as well. But what you say is very interesting. It is. It seems uh, when you word this, it is the, the poor who invent actually the next step for mankind. More the mm. poor than the wealthy people, because poor or people in crisis are, are obliged to move ahead. Mm -hmm. Isn't? It? Yeah, I wouldn't say they are the poor, but I'll say that most of the work that I do with design yeah. for sustainability yeah. is community-led. Yeah. Yeah. So I can give you some incredible examples, yeah. like yeah. a Finhorn, the Echo Village, where yeah. I, I've been based for 20 years yeah. now. It was a very isolated place in the northeast of Scotland, very difficult to yeah. grow food. And after 54 years, we are the lowest ecological mm. footprint of Britain, where we uh, generate 62% of our food. Mm. We also generate our energy with net exporters of uh, clean energy. Mm. We have very little cars. We have uh, carpools and we have schools and over 60 business with circular economy in the whole bioregion. And it was also, it was an extreme uh, scenario of Northeast of Scotland where you can't grow anything that we, mm. you create this, there is a, a cradle for invention and innovation mm. into answering, into uh, creating solutions for a difficult context. Thank you very much, May East. And mm. in the second video, we are going to go ahead and discover uh, what uh, is your present and what is your own activity now mm. and how you see the present moment. Thank you.